Once upon a time, a witch loved stories galore, and greedy as she was, she wanted more and more. When she saw that the librarian had stories of all kinds, she said, I'll capture you, all your stories will be mine. There took place a curious chase through meadow, tree, and flower, till at last they ended up right at the witch's tower. Now poor Marion the librarian, a prisoner she'll stay, until the witch is happy and lets Marion go away. Hi, I was just looking at this farm set that I found in Kerfumbly's trunk. See, here's the barn, and here are all the animals that you'd find on a farm. You know, some real farms are like this, with many different kinds of animals and plants. But many real farms just have one kind of plant or animal. I wonder what kind of a farm Kerfumbly would like. Maybe she'd like a poultry farm that had hundreds and hundreds of chickens laying eggs on it. Or maybe she would like a horse farm that had many horses and the colts and mares. Or she might like a dairy farm that had many cows giving milk. Hmm, and then she might like to have a pig farm with hundreds and hundreds of little pigs on it. Or maybe she would like a sheep farm that had many sheep on it. Hmm. I know what let's do. Let's just put these animals all in the machine and see what kind of a farm story we get. We'll put them all in here. Turn the machine on. My, it's called Ten Big Farms by Dalov Ipkar. Once there was a man named Mr. Jordan who worked in the city, but he didn't like it. He was tired of looking out the window and seeing nothing but buildings and streets and traffic. He wanted to live on a farm in the country and look at trees and grass and cows standing in the meadows. Mr. Jordan had a wife and two children, and they didn't like living in the city either. Mrs. Jordan said she wanted to live in the country where she could hear birds singing instead of cars honking. When the Jordan family finally had enough money saved up, they still didn't know what kind of a farm to buy. So they decided to take a trip and look at some farms. They all got in the car and drove off across the country to visit the ten biggest farms they could find. The first farm they visited was a big poultry farm. There were big houses, two and three stories high, with lots of windows, and they were all filled with hens laying eggs. There were rooms full of incubators that hatched the eggs, and there were rooms full of brooders for the baby chicks. Outside were big fields with little shelters where they kept the young chickens until they were old enough to lay eggs too. The second farm they visited was a big fruit farm. There were rows and rows of trees, peach trees and pear trees, plum trees and apple trees and cherry trees. There was a big sprayer to spray the trees, and lots of people were climbing ladders to pick the fruit. Other people were sorting the fruit and packing it in boxes, and there were big trucks to haul the boxes of fruit to market. The third farm was a big horse farm. There were white stables and white fences and big barns full of hay. There were mother horses and baby colts. Beautiful horses were grazing on the green grass and galloping up and down the green meadows. And there were men who trained the horses for people to ride. The fourth farm that they looked at was a big tobacco farm. 
There were acres and acres of tobacco plants with big green leaves. And there were people working, picking the tobacco leaves and loading them in wagons to take to big long barns where the leaves were hung up to dry. The fifth farm was a big dairy farm. There was a big barn for hay and two big silos. The barn had a concrete floor where big black and white cows stood in two long rows. Outside there were wide green fields where the cows grazed. There was a special room where the cows were milked with machines and a room where men washed the milking machines and a big tank where the milk was kept cold until a milk truck came for it. On the sixth farm, they raised beef cattle. There were big hay barns there, too, and green pastures. But the cows were all big, fat, red cows with white faces, and there were lots of little calves. There were great big corn fields because the farmer grew lots of corn to feed his cattle to make them nice and fat. The seventh farm was a pig farm. There were pens and pins with big fat mama sows, each with a family of little baby piglets. And there were fields full of bigger pigs eating grass and corn and getting fat for market. The eighth farm was a big wheat farm. There were miles and miles of golden wheat waving in the wind. There were big tractors that plowed the fields and planted the wheat in the spring. Now it was harvest time, and there were big combines rolling across the fields, harvesting the wheat. On the ninth farm, they kept sheep. There were big barns where the sheep had their lambs and where they stayed in the winter. There were little covered wagons that the shepherds lived in when the sheep were grazing far from home. There were men shearing the wool and a big shed where the wool was sorted and pressed into bales for shipping. The tenth farm was a truck farm where they grew all kinds of vegetables. There were big fields of beets and carrots and lettuce and beans and peas and corn and tomatoes and every kind of vegetable you can think of. There were tractors to cultivate the plants while they were growing and sprayers to spray them to kill bugs. There were big machines to help people pick the vegetables when they were ready and trucks to haul the vegetables to market. But what kind of farm should we buy, asked Mr. Jordan. It looks as if we can only have one thing. Oh, that just doesn't seem right, sighed Mrs. Jordan. Oh, I don't want just one thing, said Jimmy. Of course not, said Jane. Even if we had a horse farm, think of all the things we'd be missing. It's hard to decide, all right, said Mr. Jordan. We want a farm, but we still don't know what kind. So they started to drive home, feeling very sad. They were almost home when they passed a little old run-down farm. There were a little gray house and a little gray barn and there were a cow and a horse and a spotted pony grazing in the field. There were chickens and ducks and a pig and a dog and a cat. There were a few fruit trees near the house and weeds were growing everywhere. And there was a big sign that said, For Sale. Now this is just the kind of farm we want, Mr. Jordan said. It has everything, cried Jane. There's even a pony. And a dog, shouted Jimmy. So they bought the little old rundown farm, and they fixed everything up. They painted the house white and the barn red, and they pruned the fruit trees and fixed the fences. Now Jane and Jimmy can go swimming and fishing and hiking and they are happy helping their father and mother take care of the little farm. 
Mrs. Jordan is happy taking care of the chickens and ducks and the flower garden. Mr. Jordan is happy milking the cow and taking care of the horse and the vegetable garden. Everybody is happy on the little farm, and they are all glad that they are living in the country instead of in the city. Oh, this book had all kinds of farms in it. Kerfumbly will have to like this book, won't she? And if she does, maybe she will finally let me go on to the library. Help me call her, will you? Left and right and Zachary Zoo, here's a story just for you. Oh. Oh. Ten big farms. Why, do you know what I've been doing today? I've been flying around visiting all kinds of farms. Mm -hmm. Why don't you sit down and let's see if you can tell where I've been, all right? Okay. Now, which farm did this come from? See, an egg comes from a chicken on a poultry farm, right? A poultry farm. <gasps> Good for you. That is right. Now, which farm did this come from? Apple is a kind of fruit, so it will come from a fruit farm, right? A fruit farm. <gasps> well, that's absolutely right, too. All right, now, where did I get this? Milk comes from a cow on a dairy farm. A dairy <gasps> farm. Well, you're just wonderful. Good for you. Now, look at this, though. Which farm did this come from? Hmm, that's a hard one. A pumpkin is a vegetable, and vegetables grow on truck farms, right? A truck farm. A truck farm? You think this is a truck? Why, this is a pumpkin. It grows on a pumpkin farm. But, Kerfumbly, truck farms don't grow trucks. They grow oh. Marion... Is there a pumpkin farm in that book? Well, no, but there's a truck farm. Well, there you go again. Why, you don't know enough about farms to know the difference between a, a truck and a pumpkin. You'd better keep that book, my goodness. But I got this book for you. Why, you need it more than I do. You keep it and get me a different one, uh, a happy one, uh, oh. A Christmas book. A Christmas book. Do you know a story about Christmas? Good. I'll meet you right here next time. Once upon a time, a witch loved stories galore. And greedy as she was, she wanted more and more. When she saw that the librarian had stories of all kinds, she said, I'll capture you. All your stories will be mine. There took place a curious chase through meadow, tree, and flower, till at last they ended up right at the witch's tower. Now poor Marion the librarian, a prisoner she'll stay until the witch is happy and lets Marion go away. <laughs>